What about Forest Hills? Douglaston? Little Neck? You just make sure that you find me a spot in one of them pricier neighborhoods you're talking about. So one thing we've learned across the Power Universe is that many kingpins or queenpins have an endgame or they at least have a vision where they eventually want to leave the game. Now of course, it's always easier said than done. In Power it was Ghost who had constant battles with his persona of James St. Patrick but where he could never escape the life Ghost created. Tasha loved Ghost, not James St. Patrick. She was in love with a man who was the biggest goddamn drug dealer in New York City. When we met, what'd you think I was going to be? Hmm? The biggest goddamn drug dealer in New York City. But eventually we did see Tasha come around to the fact the game was destroying her family along with many other factors. Now maybe if she supported Ghost in his decision to leave very early on, then maybe things would have turned out a little different especially with Ghost having aspirations of the wealth and power of someone like Simon Stern. Now in Power Book 2 Ghost, we had Monet Tahada who had Zeke as her way out of the game, not just for her but for her whole family. But similar to Ghost, her past life destroyed her plan. Mecha returning and the secret of Zeke being Monet's son being exposed destroyed her endgame and whether or not she has another plan is yet to be seen. So let's see how things play out in Season 3. Now before we get to Rock and her exit plan, there are exceptions. Some characters live and die by the street and Tommy and Kanan are two classic examples. They've both been in jail or prison and there's no way either of them were going back. So there was only ever going to be one outcome for Kanan and as sad as it is to say, I'm sure the same will apply to Tommy. But bringing it back to the timeline of raising Kanan, we've got Rock who wants to sit on the throne of Queens and we've learned she's willing to do whatever's necessary even if it means using Kanan to kill his biological father but it doesn't necessarily mean she wants to be the queen pin forever just like we learned in season 1. I'm not saying I'm leaving the business. Not yet. Not anytime soon. But I want to get it so I can just give it over to Lou and step back and collect checks. And recently Patina Miller said this in an interview. Her goal is to leave something, her legacy for her family but more so if she gets knocked down, she's gonna get back up and you're gonna see that grit, that determination, that passion, ferociousness. She's a fighter and she's a survivor. It's what she is and it's what she's always done and don't ever count her out and she really is a hard no-nonsense queen pin who doesn't take any sort of risks and if we were to compare her to Ghost, he was someone who always left some sort of loose end around and Maria Suarez was a classic example who came back to haunt Ghost. But Rock showed a streak of ruthlessness. She had Dewey's kill to save Kanan. She most recently killed Scrappy and I've touched on how I think she made some of the other plays such as being the one who could have burned High Post for being a snitch or being the one to set up Marvin to take over the family organization. But her original exit plan was Lulu taking over the family business where she then sits back and collects the checks but I'm sure she's not oblivious to the fact. Lulu's head really isn't in the game and it's never been the same ever since he killed D Wiz. He was Rock's go-to guy to get shit done. He also said he never misses but he did miss Warrell and now he's late to meetings. He's focused more on his record label and now he didn't even have the stomach to watch Scrappy be killed. He turned his back and walked straight out the door but despite his apology in episode 1, Marvin seems like Rock's go-to guy for season 2. So I wonder how this changes Rock's eventual endgame and I do think we need to pay closer attention to Juliana and Rock's conversation in episode 2. You have all this money sitting here. Why don't you spend it? So this brings me full circle to the beginning of this video. Clearly what Juliana said got Rock thinking, what's the point in having all this money if you can't spend it? So the next time we picked up with Rock, she went to see Sherry in real estate and she's looking for something in a pricey neighborhood like Forest Hills, Douglaston or Little Neck and we know she can afford it. She's making 75,000 in sales a day and she hasn't even expanded yet. But away from the drug game, what's her plan? What's the new expensive property for that she's lining up? Is it an exit plan? Is it somewhere she can escape if something ever goes wrong in Queens? Is it a backup plan and something to leave Kanan if something ever happens to Rock? I do think it's a very small detail which may paint the picture of Rock's next move away from the drug game, especially because she knows Lou's head isn't in the game. But where does Symphony fit into all of this? 
He's someone who is able to take Rock's mind away from the drug game and give her the sense of normality and even to the point where she said she didn't mind having another kid with him. But we've only ever seen Symphony very briefly in episode 1 of season 2 so far, where we learn they've not seen each other for 3 months, which goes back to when Symphony took Kanan to Virginia, but the feelings clearly haven't disappeared, because you can clearly see they still care about each other. So where does Symphony fit into Rock's plan and her potential endgame, or will he just end up being another pawn on her chessboard and someone who ends up being collateral damage? So I'm not sure about you, but I really want to know more about Rock's plan for this new house she's looking for, and where does Symphony fit into all of this, if he does that is, and if he does make it out of season 2. So drop all your thoughts on Rock's endgame, and what you think her next move is, away from the drug game. Drop all your thoughts down below, and of course if you are new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.